Hi, my name is Liketh. My name is Ryan. And today we'll be presenting on our summer camp experiences. Good morning, everyone. My name is Liketh. My name is Ryan. And today we're going to be talking about our Wolfram summer camp experiences. So just a little bit about myself. I'm currently a senior at Torrey Pines High School, which is located in San Diego, California. And some of my interests include math, coding, uh, deep learning and neural networks, and I love playing basketball and tennis. So um, how I got introduced to the Wolfram language was in t uh, when I joined the Computational Thinking Club, which Ms. Brown just spoke about uh, last year in 2017. Um, we do a lot of stuff in this club, as you probably heard. Uh, we do like a lot of graphing, not only math stuff, but like basic machine learning and a lot of various different, uh, focus on a lot of various different subjects. And so um, due to this uh, Computational Thinking Club uh, and Ms. Brown's recommendation, I was fortunate enough to attend the Wolfram Summer Camp with Ryan and we did a, a project there and we had a lot of fun and we learned a bunch of things. And so uh, focusing on the machine learning aspect, I learned the basics in the Computational Thinking Club and um, <clears throat> I, this was where I was exposed to it. So we did a bunch of like stuff on classify and we did like um, myth, myth, like mythological creatures and stuff and all. And so Ryan and I presented, and another student at our school, uh, presented a project on this because we were really interested in machine learning. So um, in conjunction with our calculus BC class, we used, um, we did a project on the classification of uh, infinite series, particularly geometric series and p-series. And this used a simple binary classification and the inbuilt neural network that Wolfram has. And so just an example of the data set we created is, as you can see, the images are just P-series and geometric series. And I think we had like 75 images of each in our data set. And we trained the classify on these images. And as you can see, uh, if we do like the probabilities and input a picture, uh, you can see it's like a pretty uh, skewed uh, answer. You could, it's like 100 to what, 0, and that's because it's, it's pretty easily, you could differentiate between the data set, like they're distinguishable. And so going on to the summer camp. So I was inspired to learn more about uh, neural networks, and after um, uh, I perform, uh, we presented at the um, annual math open house at our school. <laughs> So uh, one of my friends actually had a really interesting topic at the, um, at the open house. And after I looked at that, I was just like, oh my god, I have to learn about machine learning and neural networks. And so um, in the first two weeks of summer, I, learned, I, I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials and like, on what uh, neural networks were and how they worked. And like, it was just so intriguing. And so um, we, for the next two weeks of summer, from July 1st to 14th, we attended uh, the Wolfram Summer Camp. And over here, we got a lot of exposure to the Wolfram language, and it was just uh, a very good experience, as you'll hear. And so during the first week, we met a lot of the other students. We had a bunch of similarities, and I think it was that allowed us, uh, that allowed us to um, uh, mingle pretty easily, and our interests allowed us to like, converse a lot and learn a lot about uh, each other's uh, like, interests. And so during the first week, we had like three lectures per day just because um, everyone needed to be on the same level and it was like a lot of on the basics of Mathematica and how to use the basics functions and like the syntax and all that stuff. But um, movie, um, yeah, and so we, they put us all on the same uh, playing field because so we all had the same knowledge on it. And we also had to think about our projects and what we'd do over the next week. And so my first choice project was inspired by my dad. And um, his, when he was a child, his main source of income was agriculture or farming. Um, when he lived in, uh, he, when he was born in India and lived there, and so um, my first choice project was what type of plant would be best suited for an environment given the type of soil, air temperature, moisture, and all like a lot of information. But I quickly came to realize, along with um, with the help of the mentors, that it would be a really complex project to work on because the data is really hard to find, and it would just be like complex overall. After being a beginning to the Wolfram language, it would not be. Uh, pretty good to like work on an intense project off the bat. And so during the second week, we had two lectures per day, and these were more uh, specialized. We uh, had like lectures on neural networks, blockchains, and various other topics which um, were individualized. And we also had a lot of time to work on our project as well, because um, these projects were very hard for us, and like being intros, or uh, being like, you know, introductories to the Wolfram language, it was like, kind of hard to get started and all that stuff. 
And, but uh, in comparison to that, we also had a lot of fun activities. We would play like ultimate frisbee. They had pool tables and table tennis and all that stuff. So it was like really fun along with the hard work we put in. So moving on to the main part of my presentation, my project. So my project was classifying 10 different types of font text, which is basically, so I would get an input of a picture of words and I would tell, I try to tell what type of uh, font type was used. For example, Arial or like Algeria. And so to begin off, we knew we needed a data set for this and I needed to question how we would get this data set. So what I did was I uh, created a list of al the alphabet, both uppercase and lowercase, and some of the special characters we used in uh, our sentences. And I associated these weights with how they were used in the actual English language. And um, I created a training set, which would basically create an image of um, randomly formed letters, but with how they were weighted in the English language. So if you go down, you can see a picture of just an example of what a picture looked like in the data set. And so the next step was finding a neural network that would pertain to this data set. And being an amateur to the Wolfram data repository, or neural net repository, I didn't know what they were basically, but I just took a random one, which was the Atom X AppNet, and I soon came to realize it was not a good choice. Um, I immediately ran to an error, because like every time I tried to train the neural network, it would exceed the memory of my laptop, and it would just crash the kernel every single time. And me being lazy, I would never save my work, so I just had to redo it over and over again. And yeah, I realized that I had to save my work. And yeah, I don't, yeah, for some reason, you can't see the architecture, but you guys are just gonna have to believe me on this one. So Atom X app is like a really long neural network. It has a bunch of layers and requires a lot of uh, computing power to train. So um, after getting help from my mentor and a couple of other mentors, I realized that this was not the right neural network to use because its main objective is to determine the main object in an image. For, so for example, like a cheetah or a spoon. But I was trying to recognize the font type in an image which are like two completely different um, objectives. And so I moved on to take inspiration from the Lynette, if you move up, scroll up, uh, the Lynette neural net, um, whose basic uh, objective is to find the, uh, to recognize the digit in a picture. And so I realized this was a pretty similar task to what I was trying to do. And so I took this, but I modified it a little bit. And if you go down, again, I can't uh, show the architecture for some reason, but uh, Lynette had two convolutional layers and two pooling layers, which do most of the work. And I'll explain it more, but yeah. And my, my neural net had three convolutional layers, three pooling layers, just because a little bit more different task and I guess more intensive in some way. So what the convolutional layers do, layers do are basically, they're like feature extractions. So like the, and they perform matrix multiplications. So at the beginning convolutional layers, you basically have like the general structure, the general features of the image. And moving down, if you have like a bigger neural network, they would go more into the specifics. Like for example, the features of a face or the features of like a hand, for example. And the pooling layers are basically like down sampling the image. They take the um, maximum number in a given matrix size and move it on to the output. And so scroll up a little bit. And so yeah, after doing this, I came to the conclusion that the data set was pretty unrealistic because I tried to like just take a screenshot of, an, of a word, for example, and try to input it into my neural network, and it gave me the incorrect answer. So now I was questioning, I was on the, uh, under the, the question of what I should do next. So to make the data more representative of what an actual user would try to do, I took screenshots of different um, font types, of, of articles in different font types. And so this was just an example of what one screenshot looked like. I had like six to seven of these for each font type, so it was a lot of data. And then uh, with the help of my mentor, if you go down, I created a function that takes a random segment of the image, a random 120 by 120 pixel segment of, this, uh, of the image. And it creates as many, an n number of segments that you want. So um, that's just an example of from the above article that uh, the function creates, or the function outputs. And so I generated 6,500 images for uh, my data set. And um, I, after training this successfully, I got a pretty good accuracy of 99.69%. However, I realized that it was overfitting and that I needed to do something about it. So if you scroll down, that's just a picture of like what my training looked like. And yeah, you could see that the loss is pretty low, which translates to the error being low for 
the round and the validation is what I tested the neural net on, and the error is lower than the round error, which is pretty good. And so I tried, the, I tried to test the neural net on um, the picture I showed above, and that it actually, so you can see the probabilities there, and it, those are all the font types I tried to, uh, to use in my neural net, and you could actually see that uh, it gives the correct um, output, with, which is Algerian. So, um, however, I realized that the neural net is only successful when using conjunction with like the same type of data it was trained on, and it has trouble recognizing data in any other format. So, for example, if you just tried to crop out like an image of a, of a, of a word itself and tried to input it into the neural network, I don't think it would work out that well. Um, so, although the functionality is pretty limited and, um, and, and has trouble recognizing the image, I realized that with the right type of data set, this neural net could do like whatever you want it to. So um, in the future, I hope to improve on this um, neural net by getting like different variations of images and using different like, um, and augmenting the data so the neural net could get more used to various types of data and even like use sentences or separate words or like bold or italic variants to um, train my neural net. And so, next slide. So just concluding the uh, summer camp, it was an awesome experience and I learned a lot throughout this. It, uh, it opened up a bunch of doors for me in like the machine learning and neural net um, like subjects. And um, after the summer camp, I put a lot of effort into learning more about neural networks, what actually goes inside and the algorithms and um, all the stuff that like in intrigued me, just inspired me to go on and on and to learn about them. And so those are just a couple of pictures we took at the summer camp. It was an awesome uh, time, and now I'll pass it on to Ryan, who's going to talk about his experience. All right. Uh, I'm also a senior at Torrey Pines High School, located in San Diego, California. And I was first exposed to the Wolfram language in the year 2016. This was the year that uh, my teacher decided to start the Wolfram workshops at uh, school, and this focused on the fundamentals of the Wolfram language. And I was fascinated by the power of the Wolfram language, and I started to learn about it on my own time. And because of this, I was able to finish a majority of the elementary introduction to the Wolfram language book. So next year, I transitioned over, uh, the club transitioned over to the Computational Thinking Club, which basically focused on the applications of computer science. And um, I thought it was cool that it was possible to learn uh, pure high-level computational thinking without being forced to deal with the lower-level mechanics of coding. And with my experience in the Computational Thinking Club, I, Likif and I and one other person presented at the MAP Open House that year. And this was the uh, classification of the infinite series that Likif already talked about. And with my uh, interest growing, I decided to attend the Wolfram Summer Camp this year. Uh, Wolfram Summer Camp was located in Boston and it went on for two weeks. And so generally, the daily schedule of the camp would be, or in the morning time, we would have around two hours of lectures um, focusing on the uh, Wolfram language itself. And during the afternoons, we would have uh, a lot of project time. And in the evening, we would have lectures for our mentors and guest speakers on various topics such as machine learning, cryptography, cryptocurrency, et cetera. And I like the concept of uh, learning by doing, which you could uh, directly apply what we just learned and getting creative with these, some of these topics which would have been harder to do in a lower level programming language, which is held down by the mechanics slash details of the language. And so for our project selection, we uh, were given a repository of um, around 70 ideas, and we were asked to pick around three from the repository and propose two of our own. And then from there, we would have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, Stephen Wolfram to decide which project we would be working on for these next two weeks. And so the project that I was selected to work on was uh, a personal proposal of mine, and with this, we were also assigned a mentor who was an expert in that field. And uh, the project that uh, I worked on for these two weeks was the voice sentiment classification problem. And so the goal, was, the goal of this project was to be able to take an input of audio speech file and be able to classify that into one of the eight different emotional categories using machine learning. And so to find the data, I used the uh, uh, Ryerson Audio Visual database, database of Emotional Speech, which I found on Kaggle. And with this law, um, and this consisted of around uh, 1,440 audio files of uh, voice actors saying various sentences and phrases in different emotional uh, tones. And uh, with this large file, I separated this into eight classes with the respective emotional categories, and I threaded them to their titles. And this is a represent 
representation of the data after it has been encoded. And this is the MEL spectrogram of it. All right, after I encoded the data, I put it in the uh, convolutional. I have an architecture of the convolutional neural network here. And uh, this basically extracted some of the features of the uh, spectrogram. And after I uh, extracted these features, I then inserted it into the recurrent neural network, which recognized some of the patterns in the, the image. Okay. And for the results, I was able to achieve an accuracy of around 85%. And this is the confusion matrix plot, which displays this. And um, I created a microsite, which I tested some of my own uh, audios and see how it works. Conclusion, um, it was a great experience and I was able to explore sophisticated computational ideas in the club and, with, and I gained a lot of practical experience with computer science in general. And I applied that experience to internships and work experiences. Additionally, my interest in machine learning and neural networks grew from this as well, and these two weeks helped me connect with students with similar aspirations. And uh, thank you. Yeah. We all. <laughs> We'd also like to thank our mentor, uh, Michael Kaminsky, who helped us a lot with um, our project, and he, he, he knew a lot about neural networks, so thanks for that. And we have several mentors over here, and we'd like to thank you for, for organizing this and you know helping us grow our aspirations and motivate our interest in neural networks and machine learning. If you have any questions, we're pretty Can you go back a few slides? Can you go yeah. to um, where you're uh, showing the spectrogram? Yeah, right there. Uh, yeah. So can you talk a little bit about why you first converted the audio file into a spectrogram and then the uh, I converted it into a spectrogram because I wanted to insert the images into the convolutional neural network, which would. Why, why, why images? Uh, because I thought it was easier for the ComNet to recognize the, some of the features in images, and by putting it to recurrent net, it would be able to recognize some of the patterns that, in the plot. Yeah? I wanted to ask about the two hours of lecture that you had this morning at mm -hmm. the uh, summer camp. Uh, did you find that useful, effective? Was yeah, of course. So we had like a couple of guests. Yeah, we had a couple of guest speakers. Um, that would introduce like these different topics to us which we've never heard of. So it was like, we got a lot of exposure to different things, but the main lectures helped us focus on what was like, what we needed for the camp and it helped us learn the basics and it was just like, it was, it was very important. It was like an integral part of what we did at the summer camp. So you were motivated to, to understand what the, the lecture was. Right, because right. we, we were basically introductory students to the Wolfram language and we wanted to learn more, so yeah. yeah. I guess we went over time for a couple of the lectures and like if you can be a little more time constraining or organized I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I have. Otherwise it was like an awesome experience. Yeah. Yeah. Could you say something about your engagement with the uh, computational thinking club? Oh yeah, sure. So um Ryan uh, do you want to answer that or uh, okay, so yeah, a computation it was a, a, the Computational Thinking Club allowed us to get the, our first exposure to the Wolfram language. So Ryan actually did the Wolfram workshops one year before I got to know about uh, the club. And um, now we're leaders in the club, I guess. And so it gave us like an introduction to the language. We, I had no prior coding experience myself, but I'm not sure about Ryan. And it, since Wolfram, uh, the Mathematica is pretty like intuitive language. You can understand the concepts by like, the uh, functions themselves, and you could see like how they work, and so I think it was pretty good introduction to myself and Ryan yeah. for the club. Uh, in predictor, uh, uh, regular meetings are uh, are hard to get going. Uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have forums? Do you have uh, outside communication? Do you have common projects that uh, more than uh, more than a couple people are interested in to draw you in? Yeah, so um, at the club itself, we do a bunch of activities, and Miss um, Brown posts the activities on her website if no one's available to check it out. So we have like her website as a resource, and if they, they missed out, we could email them with the activities and all that stuff. So we have outside resources. Yeah. You mentioned that you worked with infinite pool. Yes. Oh no, we did not. That's an interesting topic, but yes. Yeah, definitely would work on it.
Yeah, 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 definitely. Thank you. Yes? Uh, I know nothing about this world of machine learning. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. 99.6%. What do I operate when, when, I'm, when I look at five, spent my whole life around bonds and I choose bonds, am I, am I operating at 92% or 12%? What's, uh, what's the rule of thumb that we're comparing our machines to? I actually have no idea. We, I guess we would have to do further studies to collect data from how people recognize fonts and how often they recognize fonts in order to compare the data I have for my neural network to yours, for example. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> um, any other questions? Yes, Ms. Brown. Because when we go home, you guys are going to now teach me how to do neural networks. Yes, I'd love to teach anyone about neural networks. We're in the class. We're in the club. Yeah. Not as much as we did at the Wolfram summer camp. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Rick. I would expect that any uh, personal targets outside of Wolfram range would be concerned. Sorry? Have you started any personal projects on the side of Wolfram Oh, yes. Um, I actually created another neural network which um, recognizes uh, plant seedlings. And like, yeah, we have different classes of plants. And so I created, it was like a data set on Kaggle which I brought down and I created a neural network for that, so it, yeah, I did work on my own projects after the summer camp too. So, yeah. If that's it, thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation.